This video will contain flashing lights and disturbing content, violent and graphic images and jump scares and pop-ups and sudden loud noises and bad language and your viewer discretion is advised. Hello guys, welcome back to episode 2, I think. I think I just got blown up, and Wait, my life has Jeremy restarted. Himself, am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Huh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Left. Up. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might coming to a staircase. Stanley huh. walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. I'm gonna go the right way. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned Two, to discover eight, not an indication six, of any four. human life. What could Damn it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind Ugh. the writings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned hmm. it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Two, but of course, eight, Stanley four, couldn't possibly five? have known that. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Wee. Do I want to know the truth? Stand and walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Dun, 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 big button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Loads. Did he have the strength to find out? No. He doesn't have the strength to find out. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Fired. Each bore the number of an Who's employee fired? in the building. Stanley's I keep on forgetting what number the I am. It's 487, so I think. Individuals reduced to images on a screen. 487. Oh, shoot. Place where freedom meant nothing. Hello? Anybody? Anybody here? Hello? This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Three, was this seven, the only four. reason he was happy with his boring job? There? That his emotions there. had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life uh. in someone else's control? Never. Never. Unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Never. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yeah, he has. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, oh. eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machine... Hello?
flatness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? What's just happened? Yes. What? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Hello. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. Oh. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking. Oh, it's but so perhaps, bright. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. To let no go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon oh. his skin. The feeling of liberation. Freedom. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Oh, true love. No? Did I fail again? The end? Damn it! Seriously! Okay. I can't think. Uh, All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I didn't miss a memo. God, um, okay. Well, I'm gonna go through the white door, the right door. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope, he didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he uh -huh. wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. It is pretty good. Stanley isn't it? simply stood here, drinking, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but yeah. the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. I haven't Please, forgotten about myself. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Her? She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. Can I unplug it? If you can it? truly place your faith in an... Oh, no, 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 you can't... Did you just unplug the phone? <laughs> now that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? <laughs> None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. Why are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. 
How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. <laughs> this is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, <sighs> you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. No! Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. What? Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find what? yourself speaking with Fish. a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a bad sack and crack. Oh my god, that is amazing, it is actually 4.30. Excellent. What? Making choices on a regular basis is the best part of a, a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you huh. begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should <laughs> subside. At this time, <laughs> your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, what? welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now no. that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. There's gates now. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. <laughs> story would make no sense at all. Yes. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Thank you. What a polite, gentle gate. Thank you. Thank you. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Yay. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Thank you. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, oh. there we go. It's changed. 
Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, I hate this game. he knew the it's complex. Code. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still one, work? There one, was only one five. way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath <gasps> and then spoke the code. One, one, five? One, one, five? Hello? <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 155. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Night Shark 155. You didn't miss me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Ah. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 155. Night shark okay, fine. You're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect I'm not, I'm not Stanley not. shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came okay, to a set of two open doodles. doors, he entered the door on his left. No. no! No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Mm. This game's getting to me. No. <laughs> oh. Ugh. Ruined you. I can't believe after everything we talked about <laughs> that you my story I've broken destroyed it destroyed my work. Why? <laughs> Look what? at this chair. What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It well it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better oh. to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? Oh. What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have no. to. I have to. Oh, no! Jesus. Not again! What have you done? Dude, you've broken it! I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Yeah, here you've broken it. Rubbish. With you. You. <laughs> you thought you were so clever. <laughs> now look where we are. My entire you. world was destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You yeah. just had to see. <laughs> Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. No. That thought hadn't Not even Stanley. occurred to you, had it? That there's a world hmm. outside of you. You're a child. A child. Oh. My I'm story. stuck. <laughs> If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Oh. oh. 
when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Stanley. Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It can't oh. exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? I am here. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. Galactic Cafe. It's alright. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. No. Take as much time as you need. I've really upset him. <laughs> nope. End of game. What? Okay, anyway guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed this one actually. So, yeah, see you in the next episode guys.